Yeah, you're part of this too. So what are we going to do? I don't know. We've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> That's a few minutes. Huh? <laughs> tell us, tell us some story. Tell, Sorry. first of all, tell us your name. <laughs> well, you're going to interview me, huh? Yes. Babashi <laughs> Fujioka. And where were you born? When was that? September 25, 23? September 1923? No, 23. 25. 1925. Okay. September 23, 25. And where were you born? Hmm? Where were you born? Pearl City. Beyond, I was born in, uh, in Pearl City, and I was uh, right there until like, all the time to 25 when I went to the military service, you know. Uh -huh. I didn't want to, I mean, they drafted me when the war was over and they need some people, you know, very like, you know. So they, I took my basic training in Hawaii and uh, we took a short six week training. That's all they took, you know. They really move us real fast, like, you know, because they, they need replacement. So I took my basic in Hawaii. Then my first assignment was with the, uh, on Sand Island. You, we used to have a military uh, installation, what they call it, sand, on Sand Island. And there they kept the Okinawan prisoners. The prisoner of war from Okinawa, all over there. Mm -hmm. And I was assigned, that was my first assignment from the military. So I was more or less an interpreter for the military, and I was in charge of the whole the <laughs> Japanese, you know, the Okinawans. And uh, well, I stayed there till uh, then. I already had my mind to volunteer regular army. And uh, in 19, uh, what, 40, 45, 46, what, 45, and. Uh, I volunteered regular army, and I volunteered for assignment for Japan. I wanted to see my full country, you know, my, my parents, both parents were born in, a race, born in Japan, so I wanted to see what the country looked like, you know. What were your parents' names? My parent, my, uh, my mother's name was Yamane. My last name was Yamane, not you know. Dad and Fujioka, you know. What were their first names? My her, her first name, my mom's first name was what? What was it now? What was my mom's first name? We'll have to look it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to look it up. No, no, no. You, <clears throat> a lot of people don't ask me that, you know, they you kind of forget, you know. Uh -huh. And, uh, I had it all written down one time I was going to go to this interview, you know. Uh -huh. and, uh, but she was from Hiroshima. Uh, no, Yamaguchi. She was from Yamaguchi, way down south in Japan. And my father was from Hiroshima, where the atomic bomb, you know, struck him up. Now, how they met, they met him in Hawaii. They both <laughs> somehow came to Hawaii, you know, they separately, you know, they, they came to uh, Hawaii and uh, they got married in Hawaii. And uh, that's when they started their, their career in Hawaii. And during that time, my father was, uh, the only thing I knew that he was doing, uh, working was a taxi driver. He, like, he used to do, drive tax from Pearl City to Honolulu, you know, point to point, you know. So he established a taxi stand called Weda. And we used the name Weda, and I used it for school too, you know. So I had, I had really had two names, but I didn't know it then that I had two names because I was, I went to Weda, you know. And everybody <coughs> around, you know, you know, you ask as Weda, you know. So, uh, What's the story on how you got the name Weda? 
the name weather. Well, I, I, I really don't know how, how they got. But what did you hear? Something about your father um, paid for his tri trip to Hawaii. And he was, as part of that, he was supposed to put in service in a, a ranch or a farm on one of the islands. And he didn't like it, so then he escaped. <laughs> Did you hear all that? I didn't even hear those thoughts. Really. Yeah, he escaped yeah. and then... Uh, and went to Hawaii. Oh, went went to the main island and later on changed his name so they wouldn't be able to track him down. <laughs> What, who told you that one? I, I never heard of that. Uh, one. one of your brothers told the story one day. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, they probably knew more than I did then, you know, the background, you know. And then after 20 years of hiding, <laughs> the family finally made the decision to change their names back to Fujioka. Well, actually, we were carrying two names then. In school, when I was going to school, I used to carry weather. And after that, when I went to high school, I would change the name to Fujioka. Ah. <laughs> because I knew I was, I swear, I don't know, you know what happened, you know, where they in Fujioka, but my real name then I knew was Fujioka, you know. I didn't ah. know it then, but I, I knew later on that. that uh, so when I uh, went to high school, my high school year was all the weather, you know, I'm Fujioka. And I dropped the weather, you know. And, uh, so, yeah, we kept the name. All the people in Pearl City knew us as weather. Even though they knew, you know, what was supposed to be Fujioka, but because of the taxi stand he had and all, blah, blah, you know, we kept the name as weather, you know. Mm -hmm. And that went for years and years, you know. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had, uh, I suppose they had supposedly, from my mother's previous uh, marriage, she had a uh, girl there. And I, I learned that later. I thought she was my true sister, but I learned that later. One of my brothers told me that uh, she's not your real sister. She's, uh, you know. But anyway, she had, we had uh, three girls and six or uh, seven boys. Mm. In the family. Big family. And I was the last one, you know. How many room how many bedrooms did your house have? The house itself, the old house would just have one, two, three, four, five, six, six different rooms, you know. All the brothers used to sleep together. I used to sleep with my brothers and chase around <laughs> used to sleep with a third brother, the next time would be through the fourth brother, you know. But uh, during that time, you know, strangely, the brothers, how they had any fight among themselves, you know, truly fight, you know. And uh, so then, in other words, I think they, they got together really, you know, not really nicely, but, you know, they got together to get out, you know, not being in trouble all the time, you know. So, like I said, I was the last one of the family to bring up the rear, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then three sisters. And, uh, well, all my sisters were all there, passed away. But uh, then, when I came to the army, I uh, stayed away from the family. You know, where I stayed in Japan all the time. As long as I could, I stayed in Japan for my assignment. And from 1950 to 19, uh, well, no, 19, not 1950, 1950s is when I got out there. But I was in Japan for five years, stationed in, uh, outside of Tokyo. And, uh, I was in the engineer outfit. Because of my background, I used to have a welding background. Mm -hmm. So I was assigned to an engineer unit. What and was your rank when, when you were in the Army? Well, I, I came out as a, the last rank was Master Sergeant E7, then E7 then used to be mm -hmm. a high rank enlisted. So, and uh, 
Do you know that promotion, it was all surprise promotion for me because I never did know my name was, you know, submitted for promotion, blah, 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 you know. Next thing I knew, the in charge, you know, supervisor come in and give me my stripe, you know, say, hey, you spend <laughs> corporal, you sergeant, and so on. That's when I knew that I got promoted. It never was uh, beforehand. I never knew that I was promoted, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was a necessary for a long time. I was in a, I was in charge of the personnel section, military-wise, you know. Personnel used to keep the personnel records and so forth, maintain the records and payroll, you know, and make sure they get paid right and right. So, yeah, my life was real good. And she knows you went to overseas with me a couple of times. And, uh, you took, you, your last was uh, in Germany, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. Germany was the last, last trip. My other two daughters are, uh, what do you call, uh, great, not great, not uh, great, uh, Talmai and uh, the other two, uh, Doris, they uh, went to different places, you know, where I was assigned to, but, but mostly, uh, Mostly in, uh, between uh, Europe and uh, Hawaii, you know. Mm -hmm. but so when you were in Japan for five years, did you meet anybody over there? I, that's where I met my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that story. That's why that story was started like this. I was. Uh, we were. My unit was in maneuver. Training, in training in uh, Mount Fuji. Every year, you can go to Mount Fuji and do the regular tra training. Anyway, I was uh, stationed out there in temporary duty, not in, uh, in uh, Fuji. And uh, we used to come come back to uh, Tokyo, you know, for weekends and so forth, you know. We'd take a couple of days off and come to Tokyo. And, so this one time when I was uh, going back to Mount Fuji, I was in uniform and uh, she was sitting, at that time the Japanese people were not, uh, they, they, they were off limit from our coaches. We used to have a separate coach, you know, different coach on the on line. Mm -hmm. And our coach used to have a red, uh, I mean, white stripe around the, uh, what I call for train, you know, signifying that that's, that's for, you know, military people. You know. And she, she was there, she actually, uh, like I said, we was going back to Mount Fuji. And, and she was already seated in that same coach. And I saw she was sitting by herself, so I just <laughs> invited myself and sat with her and started talking with her, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and got her address and all that, mm -hmm. and mounted, you know? But that, that's when my, our first meeting was in the, on the train site. And so after we had our training and so forth, we came back to Tokyo. So I went out. In the meantime, I got a home address and so forth. You know. <laughs> For some reason, you know, I got a home address. And so so uh, whenever I came back to a camp trade, a camp that we used to uh, be stationed, and I used to have a jeep there myself, my own jeep. And I said, I'm going to have to find her, you know, and I, because I had the address and so forth so, of where she was living. So it took me about almost a whole night <laughs> to find out where she was, you know, acting. So I, I, uh, I spoke, when I went to her town, and uh, I asked her, uh, this is the one, uh, I asked this policeman, you know, I gave him the address, and, and the policeman didn't know what the ad no, address was, you know. So I said, that's pretty strange, you know, the police station doesn't know you know, the address. So I gave up and then I 
this one uh, lady passed by, she said, yeah, what helped me find this place? You know, I got this address, I want to look, look it up, you know. So she helped me out and found a, found a house and later on my wife said, how come you brought the women? Maybe <laughs> start looking for my house, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's the way I found her real house and where she was living. And that's when I got the cheap as I started, you know. We, and, uh, yeah, we had, a, we had a good time. And we used to go out to, uh, in Japan, we used to have this uh, hot spring location, hot spring bad location. So, and we used to go out there over the weekend, we go out to hot spring bad, you know. And we had, we had a good time, and, and uh, we used to go. I, I, used, I used to remember one place that they used to have a. The military used to have a hamburger joint in, down in Tokyo where you can eat you know, hamburger, you know, mm -hmm. American food, you know. So I used to go down there and buy some food and take it home with me and enjoy it with, my, with the family, you know. And uh, yeah, so we, we really had a good time. And then eventually you decided to get married and leave Japan? Well, at that time, before, you see, when I went to Korea, no, I was wondering, Korea? I went to Korea, and during that period I was in Korea, we uh, started on our marriage uh, application, you know, we used to have. In the military, then we used to do all kind of uh, background check and all that, mm -hmm. you know, to get married, you know. And, uh, yeah, we we finally get, and we finally got married on Fourth of July. In, back in Japan time, you know, then Fifth of July we took off and uh, we celebrated after that, you know, got married. And, I stayed with her family place in her house, you know. And, uh, yeah, at that time, uh, she had a brother there, you know, but a mistrack of him. I don't know what ever happened to the brother that she had. But, uh, yeah, we, we, lived, we lived with her mother and her brother in, uh, in Arsenal, in this one house. And, uh, yeah, that's, that was, that was, I really enjoyed my assignment in Japan. Mm. It was a real good assignment. Almost, uh, at that time, the military people was uh, really uh, guarded from, from the Japanese people, really treated you real good if you know, in uniform, being in uniform. uniform. And uh, we, we had our own, uh, Hotel in, in Tokyo. Wow. And you know, that military people go, you know, in and out, you know, mm -hmm. take their vacation, whatever. But uh, yeah, we used to have, uh, they used to well, almost take over the house and then <laughs> use them as a military, what do you you know, R and R section, rest and recuperate section. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it in Japan, you know, assignment in Japan. Where did you go after Japan? Hmm? Where did you go after Japan? Where, where did we go? After Japan, well, I uh, went to the Hawaii for about uh, one, one year, I guess it was. Uh, then I said, no, I How did that work out, bringing this Japanese girl home to meet the family? Well, we were all Japanese, but you know, no, no, what do you call them? Yeah. Not like a like it's up, you know, bringing up Japanese uh, women, you know, with, you know, I'm the same, same way, you know. <laughs> so, so it all worked out pretty well? Well, it, it worked out real good with the, with the rest of my family, you know, brothers and sisters. So, yeah, and when I was stationed in Hawaii, being in the military, and, uh, Try to get out of the house. I, 
I have to go to the military or, or dependent housing, you know, because my home, my house, the old house, was getting kind of crowded, you know, with other mm -hmm. families, you know. So we decided to, you know, go on our own and uh, went to a military uh, base, you know, and got the military uh, housing. Yeah. How long were you married before you started having kids? How long before? The first one was a year after, because Doris was born in, uh, no, almost two years ago. Well, Doris was born in 52. We got married in 1950, mm -hmm. so two years ago. That's our first son, Doris came along, two years ago. Then was two years after that was Kathy, and two years after that was uh, Tom, you know. Why'd you keep having daughters? <laughs> I didn't know the trick of getting, <laughs> getting boys. Nobody taught me that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Very hard. Everybody else was born in the military, except Doris was born in the outside the hospital, in the private hospital. Then she was the only one. Because <coughs> Kathy and the Tamil was born in Japan, and I was, a, I was in the military, and I was, went to the military hospital. Mm. And they were born at the military hospital in Tokyo. And, uh, Grace was the last one who was stationed right here in Fort Lewis. No, not Fort Lewis, uh, what was that? Uh, the Renton. Yeah, well, I was stationed in Renton. I was uh, housing Renton, but I was Fort Chapter, no, not Fort Chapter, Fort Chapter is uh, what I call it, Hawaii. Uh, what is that camp out there? Uh, Dent? Huh? Dent. What? Dent. Mm. Okay. When entering that the army hospital that you were born there. Was it in Seattle? Mm -hmm. In Seattle. Seattle. Oh, the one that's by Magnolia? Yeah, 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 Magnolia. What what was what's the camp name? I don't remember. <laughs> There's Magnolia. a camp out there. Yeah. There was. Uh, Magnolia. Mm. And you were born in the army hospital there. Didn't you serve in three wars? I did. Vietnam, Korea, and actually that's the only two wars that I served, you know, went through. Because uh, World War II was ended, you know, ended when I got drafted. Mm. So the war I associated with in Vietnam and uh, Korea. Speaking of World War II, mm -hmm. tell us the story of how it started. How it started? Well, I was a kid then, so I really don't know, you know. But the day it happened was Sunday, Sunday morning in Hawaii time, Sunday, December 7th, and all the family, we were having a kid, we were having breakfast, and uh, then all of a sudden we start hearing the uh, we saw a firecracker or something or some kind of maneuver was going on, you know. We didn't know what the hell was really going on. Got living Pearl City and Pearl Harbor was right across more or less, you know. Right neighbor. So yeah, it's a you know, figure what what's what really what's going on, you know. We didn't know then and that policeman we had a police station across us, they didn't know what was going on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really knew what was really going on, December 7th. So our family decided to get on the car and go up the hill. You know, Pilsen, we used to go up the hill and you can see the whole harbor, you know, the whole harbor, you know. And we, we seen, the, I saw the whole action. I still remember till today the whole action that was going on in Pearl Harbor, and sinking all the Arizona and Utah. And and two others that sank right in the hopper, you know. So you saw the airplanes flying overhead? We saw, yeah, the plane flew right over our head with the zero, you know, the general mm -hmm. signature. You know. 
like I said, we didn't know what really what's going on. And, uh, so when we when we were up the hill, we saw all this action, you know, this bombing of the Arizona and the Utah and Utah capsized right in the heart and all that. And, uh, you know, later on we found out that the Japanese submarine came to the harbor. The two-man sub, they used to call them, two-man submarine, came into the harbor, slipped through the harbor. The only way they could have come into the harbor is they followed one of our American sh uh, ship right, you know, right behind them because they used to have a warning gate not coming mm -hmm. into the harbor where they lift the gate up, and, you know. And, uh, and that's the only way we can, I can tell you know, how they came through it, you know, got by the, uh, the harbor, you know, coming through there. Mm -hmm. Just uh, coming with the ship that was coming into the harbor, you know, right behind the ship. And we go, because the gate was set, the gate was open, you know, then they closed it up and the ship all come in. So, yeah, then, that Arizona burn all day long, man. Black smoke, you know. And, uh, How long did this go on? How long did you watch it? We, we almost watched the whole whole day up there, you know, <laughs> up the mountain. Mm. Because, yeah, because then we still did not really know that we were, you know, being, we were being attacked by the Japanese, you know, in the war, war was the war. And then later on, we for some, for some uh, where I think uh, the policemen, police station finally heard about, you know, they finally heard that, you know, they declared war against the Japanese. You know. Then the, the, the Japanese people out in, in Hawaii, they were not uh, in turn like they did did in San Francisco and you know, they pulled it all out and went to the intern, you know, camp, you know, because they couldn't pull up the Japanese people, Japanese nationality in Hawaii because if they do, they wouldn't have hardly anybody left, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. because the majority was Japanese people. So, look, we were not bothered except the only people that were we were part of the Japanese uh, the, uh, high school teachers, you know, Japanese teachers and so forth that had education in Japan and came to Hawaii to teach, you know. They were, they were the only people that I know was sort of interned from Hawaii anyway. And they all got you know, shipped to the uh, United States, you know, they interned, interned them okay. so, then after that, you know, I lost track of the uh, person, the Japanese principal that we used to have and so forth. I never heard from them after that. Never knew what really, really happened to them, you know, where they went to, what they happened. And of course, the Japanese school was suspended in Hawaii. There was no Japanese school at all after that. I used to, I used to, uh, when I was a kid, I used to go to English school in the morning, during the morning period until one o'clock. Then after that, we used to go to the Japanese school, the Japanese people that, you know, we, my Chinese had their own Chinese school, Japan, uh, Japanese had their own Japanese school, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we had a, about an hour class, one hour class in the Japanese school, you know in Hawaii during that time. And uh, that's where I learned my, you know, Japanese, you know, reading and writing. So, yeah, but what kind of hectic at time. <laughs> so what was it like growing up in, in Hawaii during that time, during the war? The life in Hawaii? Yeah. Well, number one, we used to have blackout in Hawaii. No light, in, you know, after darkness, no, no light at all in the houses, you know. And 
in the long run, they used to, uh, we used to have a blackout, you know, blackout our window, you know, you know, before the light don't show up. But, yeah, for a long time, we uh, lived throughout the time, the dead time. Picture day, we came from uh, Europe, we bought that in Europe. I don't know what the hell that thing's supposed to represent. Where did you buy that at? Well, well my boy, when we were in Europe. Uh-huh. And what, in Germany? Yeah, in Germany. Uh-huh. We bought those. Well, I'm not sure whether it was in Germany itself or elsewhere mm-hmm. when we went on vacation or you know, like uh, other places. But uh, and just like those clock, you know, uh-huh. they were all bought in Germany and stuff. So. Right, the at coffee that, table. At, at that time, we yeah, wiped it. Or this guy, we bought four watches, you know, four watches, watch like that. And think each one of the girls were going to have one, one each, you know. So we bought four of you them. Know, the coffee table, those special made, you know, all for you. Yeah, we had a good time. I only spent one year in Europe, and because I decided this is going to be my last hitch in the army, uh-huh. and I've never been to Europe, and they asked me to go to Europe, so I'm, we're going to Europe for one year and retire after that. So, because I already had 20 years, you know, when they told me, you know, and I was thinking, gee, I hope I can go to Europe, you know, sure enough, they, my unit in Fort I was stationed in Fort Lewis. The unit that uh, at that time uh, Vietnam was, you know, crazy. You know, they were sending a lot of troops or uh, yeah. organization there. So my outfit, the engineer out to our battalion, was uh, was had to go to you in uh, Vietnam, and I already spent my time in Vietnam and came back, and I already had time in service in Vietnam, so I said, I'm not going back to Vietnam, I'm going to Europe. <laughs> That's when my assignment came in, said, go to Europe. So I said, well, go pack up and go to Europe and see what's going on, <laughs> what, you know, what's all there. So you packed the whole family up and went to Germany? Yeah, went to Germany. Where'd you stay in Germany? Bad Kochnok, the town of uh, Bad Kochnok. Uh, where would that be now? Outside. About 40 miles from uh, the uh, airport. What that airport I would be in general. But anyway, we had a good time on this short, short time, you know. Were, were you stationed on a military base? I was stationed, uh, yeah, and we were in the military housing too. You know, there's a whole bunch of military house. We, we were stayed in a military uh, house. And, uh, and uh, I was uh, I was at that time I was assigned to a signal battalion. You know, personnel people. They, you know, you can go any outfit. You know, no matter what, then, because you work in personnel record, you know, mm-hmm. service record and pay the you know, pay a record and so forth. So you can, you can go to any organization. You know. So, it's not like a particular infantry man or whatever, you know. So, yeah, I went to uh, get uh, Germany in, in a signal outfit. Uh, then we stayed there one year and came home. So that was enough. You know. At that time, Grace. That was like 1963. Grace was real wonderful. Uh, she was an infant. Yeah, she was. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little over a year or two, or two. But, but I think by the time we came back, she was a uh, what do you call it? But uh, anyway, she was she was a baby yet, <laughs> baby of the family. Yeah. And I don't I don't I don't know if she remember anything in Europe. Does she ever talk anything about Europe? I'm not sure if she remembers much from then. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think she she was too you know. Young then to remember all those all the way from military houses to we were in we were in the third floor of the barracks, uh, barracks type housing, you know. Uh, what a 
PX. Of course, every weekend we used to go downtown, look around downtown, do the shopping. Yeah, well, I had a good short 11 months over there. Mm -hmm. Decided to come home and retire. See, you, were you actually in the service when you came here? I mean, uh, no, to I, the Northwest? I was, I was discharged. <clears throat> when I came back to uh, Fort Lewis, not, not Fort Lewis, <laughs> I was stationed here once in Fort Lewis uh, before I went to Germany. And, and I retired. And uh, I retired, uh, my retirement was in the East Coast, in Fort Dix, uh, there's a retirement center mm -hmm. that retirees go to, you know, for retirement purpose. And I was retired then, and, uh, and uh, we really, we said, well, where do we go from here, you know? We didn't have any place to go, really, no mm -hmm. house, no anything like that, you know, back here. But we were familiar with Fort Lewis area. So I said, well, that's head for Tacoma, you know. <laughs> so we headed back here, came straight back here. And, uh, yeah, ended up in the uh, <laughs> Tacoma area. I don't know, something. Because, I think, myself, I didn't want to go back to Hawaii because it cost too much money. You know, uh -huh. thing, you know? You know, how to house it. If I go there, I want to go to buy a house. Now I don't wanna I don't wanna be there with uh, my big family, you know, back home. We used to have four or five brothers, you know. Pretty big Fujioka family like that. You didn't want that, huh? I didn't I didn't care for that, you know. I didn't care too much about that. Because I had the life the army life to stay away from the family, you know, the family, yeah. you know. Well my, my mom and dad always passed away so nobody I mean, Nobody back there but the brothers, you know. So, yeah, I didn't care much to go back to Hawaii and retire. Because uh, I already made up my mind that I'm going to retire somewhere in Port Louis, you know, this area. So, yeah, we headed back here and just set myself up, retired back here. <laughs> Yeah, we came over here and we got to look for a house. And uh, you went to our old house too, right? Well, yeah, that's where I met you was when you yeah, had the yeah, old house. Yeah, the old house, the two the old house. Uh, with five. the big white columns out front. Yeah. Nice house. So, yeah. right after you retired, you bought that house? Uh, yeah, we bought that house after, yeah. And we bought that lot right now. That's the first house we ever own ourselves. You know? Really? Okay. Yeah. Nice house. First house. We say, yeah. We, we, like we say, uh, we decided to settle down here. So we, time we came back from Europe, we, we, there was a family, uh, the Williams family, they, uh, they uh, bought us in the house, you know. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, look for a house ourselves, you know. Yeah. So we stayed there with them about a week before we found that house. You know. and, uh, yeah, 859, 82nd Avenue, still remember. Yeah, we stayed there a long time. I didn't realize you'd only owned two houses. Hmm? You only owned two houses in your life? That house and this house? Yeah. Especially how it was, uh, you know, a lot of pro you know, property. Yeah. How long did you live in that old house? So, 64 through 88? Yeah, 88. Yeah. 88, you know, part of 88. Huh. Mm -hmm. We sold the house in Japan and we had enough cash to cash this place, you know. That's right. But you sold the Oh, that's right. You sold the house in Japan. I thought yeah. you had this house bef mm -hmm. before you sold the house in Japan. No, no, we, uh, we sold the money to 
between between that and uh, when we uh, got there, we uh, we knew we can get you know the, the, the heart from Japan. We can buy something, you know. Didn't you so, get like a, a ridiculous amount of money for that house in Tokyo, <laughs> a million dollars or something? Well, uh, was a Korean fellow that bought that house. Uh huh. And he was in a, he was in some kind of business himself, you know. But uh, anyway, he, yeah, he bought you know, bought it all cash too, you know. He had cash, and, and somehow he had the uh, he uh, had cash in uh, you know American currency. Uh huh. I don't ask him where the hell he got it. Man. Anyway, that's where we got we bought that. Uh, he bought that out he came, when we came here. He came over here and gave me cash for that house in Japan, you know. So that we bought this house, so we had enough money to buy this property. Remind me, how did Baba had a story about how she bought the house in Japan? This is way back. Before was, real estate became so yeah, expensive uh, there. When she first, uh, so she, she was from uh, down south, way down, uh, what, what, uh, Otsu, you know, uh -huh. town of Otsu, O-T-S-U. That's where uh, she was born and raised there. And uh, she got a job to, you know, She, she was a secretary for this uh, special service outfit, you know, American uh, military. We, we used to, they used to have uh, uh, service uh, in, J in Japan, Tokyo area. And she, she was, uh, at first she was working also for a while. So she, she, dis uh, she had a chance to come to Tokyo, and that's what she decided. Uh, she said, Mom, I'm going to Tokyo, just come with me, you know. So she came to Tokyo and found a small two-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a real small house. And in, in fact, uh, the original house, we had to tear it down. We rebuilt that house in Tokyo and uh, put a two-story house in uh, one of them. And we lived there for a while. So yeah, after after being in Tokyo for a while, and then well, I was still in the service then. And so we said, you know, let's see, from Japan we went to we went to Hawaii for a while, and from Hawaii we went to Europe. My last assignment. Yeah, we traveled around quite a bit. Yeah, I, I met my. I, I told you how I met my wife, huh? Yes. Yeah. In the train. Yeah, I think uh, we actually have some video of her describing that as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah we, for for some strange, I was uh, I was stationed in, in in Tokyo, but my my unit at the uh, Training exercise in uh, Mount Fuji, you know. Mm -hmm. We uh, we alternate that division, alternate them. We take a training up in uh, they call it Mount Fuji uh, uh, training center. Do all the firing and so. So I was uh, so I was uh, we were up there in uh, Mount Fuji on a training exercise, and during that time we. Had a weekend pass, go come back to you know, go, go to Tokyo, or whatever, wherever you want to go. So I decided to go back to uh, Cambridge, original uh, station. Then uh, my time was up to go back to a uh, training center. So then I met her in a in a, in a train, you know. Mm -hmm. And at that time they used to have uh, the military was uh, you know, was occupation then. And uh, the coach she was in was mainly for Allied people, you know. 
was reserved for allied people, you know, and, and certain, uh, at, at certain time the Japanese people can buy tickets for that particular you know, coach, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she, she happened to be sitting, sitting there by herself, and I you know, <laughs> sat next to her and started chatting, you know, <laughs> in Japanese, you know. And I got her address <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, I said I'll look you up when I come back from training. And she was, at that time, she headed out to uh, some town where her friend got, got married. So she went to a wedding then, that weekend. But uh, then that, that's where we met in the train, in the train yeah. my first assignment <laughs> with her. Was your Japanese pretty good? Hmm? My Japanese? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say good, but not enough to get by with the people, you know? Yeah. But uh, I can speak, if, if they go to, you know, beyond my uh, capacity, I say, hey, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got by with my Japanese over there. What I knew about, you know, how to speak. Because I, I went to Japanese school in, uh, in Hawaii. Up to the time uh, the war came by. And so, were you speaking? Did your family speak Japanese when you were growing up? My mom and dad were Japanese. You know, I told this, you know. Is that all they spoke in the yeah, household? In the household. Yeah. Okay, so. But but then, my mom, my dad, for this so long, so long that she's what we call the pidgin, pidgin English, you know. Uh huh. <laughs> well, more like a Hawaiian language, <laughs> use our own, we establish our own <laughs> words, you know, over there. So, we got by and spoke, you know. yeah, you know, I talked, you know, talking to my mom and dad, I had to talk Japanese, you know. So, we got training in that. You know. so, that was a good training for learning Japanese. So, when I, Came to the uh, when they drafted me in the service, I said I'm going to volunteer and go to Japan. You know? mm -hmm. Because I was a regular draftee when I first came to the service. They drafted me, and, uh, and my first assignment, my regular first assignment uh, in the army was, uh, I was uh, in charge of the uh, POW from Okinawa. Uh -huh. This one the war ended, you know, and we had a whole slew of Okinawa came to as a POW station in Hawaii. They called it Sand Island. It was an island by itself, you know. And uh, PO, POW from Japan was there. And, uh, and that was my first assignment over there in charge of the whole group. <laughs> so, because I can. You know, like I said, I flew in Japanese, so you know, I got by with the Okinawa too, you know, they can speak Japanese, you know. Right. So, yeah, we had fun. I had fun, you know, with those people you know, until I decided to go my own way to you know, go to see my fatherland, you know, mother. Yeah, so I volunteered. You know, at that time, you can almost volunteer any type of assignment you want, you know. So I volunteered for Japan and got my first assignment for Red Army in Japan. Yeah, I remember that. my first assignment in Japan was in Camp Drake, uh, about 40 miles from Tokyo, you know. There was an infantry outfit that I was uh, detached to. But that was my first assignment in Japan. You know. I stayed there about five years until the Korean War broke out and then we had to go to Korea. Oh, I didn't know you were there that long. Yeah. Five years in Japan. Yeah, I was yeah. Yeah, five years because uh, at that time you can, uh, you know, there was a limit, you know. You know there was, well, there really were no limit of how long you can stay at, you know, but you can volunteer 
to stay there longer than your regular assignment, you know. Mm -hmm. So every time my enlistment come up, or my time was up, I re-enlist for the same outfit again, you know. So I stayed you know, until 1950 when that program broke out. So, and my, my unit had to pack up and go to Korea from there. We went on a, from Korea from Yokohama, we went on a LSD, the one they called the, at that time, the boat LSD, went all the way to Korea. Hear all kind of stories, you gotta uh, winterize your jeep and beach and then you're gonna be in about five feet of water and all that crap, you know, so we had to uh, winterize our jeep. And, you get all the uh, exhaust pipe sticking up in the air and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, we had a good time. And then once we got there, shit, we didn't even hit water, water you know. <laughs> we just let it right out, and, right out on the land and took off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun that time. Yeah, got shot at a couple of times in Korea. You got shot at? Yeah. Because uh, we were, the, you see, I was a, a kind of interpreter for my battalion commander, you know. Uh -huh. I, I used to be his, his driver, you know. <laughs> so wherever he had to go, I had a door with him, you know. And one time we went to the, the river that uh, I didn't call, I didn't call it Gansi, uh River between uh, uh, Korea and uh, well, between their side and our side, had this river, you know, between us, and we had to go up there and check the bridges and all that, and people on the other side. We didn't know who they were, but you know, they were firing at us, you know. And uh, one of my officers got uh, shot in his uh, leg there, too, when, when we were retreating. They said, hey, let's get out of here, you know. So, yeah, I was, I was shot at in Korea a couple of times. And Could you hear the bullets go by? Yeah, you can. You, know, you can, but you know, at that time you don't pay too much attention. You just <laughs> retreat, you know, just yeah. get in the deep and get the hell out of there, you know. And, uh, yeah, you can, you can hear from the, the other side of the river, they're firing at us. I couldn't see them, you know. You can see the blood of the rifles, you know, but, I, but you can't see them suckers, you know. And uh, that's about the only time, a couple of times in Korea, that pretty close to get killed. Yeah, yeah Vietnam, I think. I didn't have much in the Vietnam. I was stationed in the rear detachment, they call it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we used to the process uh, incoming unit, the fresh unit, they all come in by the unit, you know. Rotate and come in and have hospital unit, and this and that. We used to process all the people in, in Saigon. I was stationed right in Saigon. Too. Everybody come in Saigon first and uh, get out, and out in the field. How long were you stationed in Saigon? I wasn't there too long. Only, uh, see, I was uh, from, from um, I, was, I was stationed in Japan in, in Okinawa then, and my unit, we broke up our personal section and we broke up in two different sections. One section went to my my section went to uh, Saigon, you know, and we uh, we just process personnel, new personnel, new outfit coming to the Saigon. So I, I wasn't there too long in Saigon, but uh, it was a crazy place over there. Couldn't go out at night, you know, because of, uh, you don't know who the hell uh, 
Okay. Can you, you can only walk walk around here the daytime in downtown Taiwan. But we won't we can't by by nighttime, no? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, 